Um, today represents another historic day in the life of the Achievement Center, uh, the Hope Commission, and for the gentleman I refer to as our guys. Um, so I was pleased to hear that the governor was willing to sign this important piece of legislation right here in the building uh, where we've done a great job of working with guys who are returning from incarceration. Um, I'll start by giving you a sense of what we're going to do this afternoon, a few introductions, and then we'll get right into the meat of the reason we're here today for. So um, I want to talk about um, the welcome, which will be uh, I am doing. Uh, the, I will introduce, uh, or Granville actually will introduce the governor, and then the governor will also introduce Damien, who is up front here as one of our guys. Um, I also want to take a moment to recognize the guys who are here and why we exist, many of which are standing along the wall there, and they gave me a hard time today because they said they would have dressed differently for the occasion. But if you are a member of the Achievement Center, I always like to recognize these guys first. Can you set, sort of wave your hand so we know who? <laughs> I also like to take a moment to uh, recognize the people who make this possible for me, and that's what I call the greatest asset of this organization, and it's our board of directors. So if you are a Hope Commission board of director member, can you please stand for a second, please? Obviously, there are a number of elected officials in the room today. Um, to my right, your left, is Senator Margaret Rose Henry. <laughs> Representative Helene Keeley. <laughs> Representative Paul Bombach. <laughs> City Councilman Justin Wright. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, City Council President Theo Gregory. The scan room, make sure I didn't miss anybody. And uh, Larry Morris is here from the congressman's office. JJ Johnson. JJ Johnson just walked in. <laughs> and uh, one of our greatest partners is the Department of Correction, uh, Commissioner Coop is here. <laughs> and uh, I also want to recognize the people who make uh, the fabulous work that we do possible. And so there are a number of Hope Commission and co-located partners in the facility. So I see Corey Priest to my left. <laughs> Jim Elder is in the back, who is our Director of Clinical Services. <laughs> Brad Owens in the purple tie. <laughs> and Sequoia um, is our office manager. So many of you know how we function here, but it's really an opportunity for us to support men who return from incarceration. And we do that using uh, the best evidence, the best programming, and the greatest staff assembled to make this stuff work. Um, there are a number of co-located partners, and I want to take a moment to recognize those individuals who are here. Ashley Biden is here from the Delaware Center for Justice. <laughs> Chris Devaney is here from Connections. Uh, Chris Fullman is from the Department of Labor, he's here. <laughs> and there are a number of other partners who are not here today, but I do want to recognize them being here. I'm sorry, uh, Jonathan Wilson is from Fathership Foundation. <laughs> uh, we also work with Life Health Center, uh, DAB Medi Mediation, Parents of Incarcerated Children, Delaware Gambling, and the Black Heritage Educational Group with Ms. B.B. Coker. So I'm going to move along, but I said this, uh, I'm not sure how many more times we'll have the governor in the building uh, before he leaves the office, and I thought it was important that I share a, qu couple, uh, a quick story and then talk a little bit about some of the significant legislation that has occurred under his administration. Um, so about eight years ago, myself and uh, at the time my board chair and co-chair sat down with then uh, Treasurer Markell to talk about the importance of supporting men who returned from incarceration. Um, he certainly had a platform and had already had some ideas around how he would do so. And within a week in office, he signed um, Executive Order 7, which was the creation of IADAP, which was a way to sort of begin to think about how we can, uh, the State Departments can work together 
to help with the transition from men who are coming back from incarceration. So that sort of started, in my opinion, the ball rolling on a number of different um, legislative pieces. Um, Senate Bill 226 was next, um, which was Justice Reinvestment Act. Um, Senate House Bill 167 was the state's uh, ban in a box. Uh, about a year ago, the governor was here to sign Senate Bill 217, which is driver's license reform. Um, and then finally he signed 260, House Bill 264, which was allows DOC to hire qualified offenders. So I just wanted to again know that there are, let you guys know that the governor has done a great deal of work in this area. And on two occasions, we've been able to sign those bills in law here in Delaware. Um, my next duty is to, to introduce Granville, who will then introduce the governor. So Granville has been uh, sort of a soldier for us for about five years now. I met Granville and he initially began doing outreach for us in the community when we decided this was going to be the space for us to use um, for our former offenders. Granville has been with us on a number of different ways and continues to work with our guys um, as we sort of uh, work with them getting back and forth to Cherry Lane and just being a, a significant peer in the work that we're doing here. So I want to introduce Granville who would then introduce the governor and then we'll get right into the program. Thanks, Randall. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Granville Brown. I work with uh, Connections. I'm the reentry uh, navigator for Connections Community Support Program, who provides the behavior and mental health for Delaware Department of Corrections. Um, this is a very historical day. You know, I don't know why it seems like I'm so nervous a little bit. I'm in here with a bunch of friends and family. But uh, I understand how important this bill is for the individuals uh, relieving and removing the financial responsibilities in order for these individuals to vote is very important. Uh, the individuals that I work with every day here at the Achievement Center, which is like a second home to me. Uh, I've been trying to really work on not uh, holding people hostage because for people who know me uh, historically I've been known to be long-winded so uh, <laughs> and believe me I was working on that all night long so I'm glad y'all laughed but uh, with no further ado I want to introduce the man that's going to make this uh, possible for signing this bill into uh, into a law and that's our governor Jack Markell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Granville. You have an awesome voice, by the way. I mean, that is just uh, sort of closed my eyes. And he sounds like Barry White or something. I don't know if anybody else heard that or not. People say that to you before? Um, yes. <laughs> All right. I think that's as far as we're going to go in that conversation. But. Uh, so, um, Charles, thanks for hosting us again. Uh, thank you for your uh, comments about some of the work that our team has done uh, over the last few years, and uh, I, I want to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, I do want to say to uh, Representative Keeley and um, Senator Henry and Representative Bombeck uh, how much uh, we appreciate the, the work that you are doing. Where's JJ? Thank you. JJ, thank you. You've been, you've been a champ. Who is? Okay, Stephanie. Um, thank you, because we wouldn't be in a position where I can sign the bill without the great work that, that you're doing. I also want to thank Drew Fennell uh, from my office, who has really taken an incredible leadership role in many of this work, in much of this work. And um, so thank you, Drew. And uh, although he was introduced, it helps a lot when you have a uh, commissioner of correction. Uh, who is as smart and uh, progressive and open-minded as Rob Coop is. Uh, so I think you've done a great job. Thank you. And to all the other partners who were introduced, I uh, thank you as well. Although, BB, it's never a good thing to get more applause than the governor does. <laughs> and uh, so, um, the, uh, you know, the, the reason that I ran for office and the reason I think that most of the elected officials here run for office is really about one word, and that word is opportunity. You know, we are, we are in the business of trying to make sure that all of the people we serve can go as far as their potential will take them. And one of the things that really has, uh, I think, troubles all of us 
not just in Delaware but across the country is there's no way that we can thrive as a as a city as a county as a state as a country if we leave so many able-bodied able-minded people who want to contribute to society and if we leave them on the fringes and that is a lot of what this uh, this bill is about but before I get to the bill I, I just I, I did want to talk about a few of the things that we've been working on and, and Charles mentioned a bunch of them, and I, I won't repeat all of that, but I did want to provide a little more uh, on some of those issues. Um, you know, I think one of the, there, there's no question uh, that we have a lot of folks who work hard to keep uh, dangerous offenders uh, behind bars, whereas, which is where a lot of them should be. But I think we've also learned that the, you know, lock them up and throw away the key mentality uh, hasn't really made us any safer. You know, we are a state that incarcerates more people, uh, you know, as a percentage than our country does. And we're a country that incarcerates more than the rest of the world. And it doesn't make us any safer. And so a significant portion of the work that we have done over these last few years uh, is to be a whole lot more thoughtful about who gets incarcerated in the first place and what happens to them while they're incarcerated so that when they get out, they have a better chance of being successful. And that has really been the focus of a significant portion uh, of our work. And Charles mentioned the Justice Reinvestment Initiative, which is something that we, uh, I signed several years ago uh, now. Uh, and that was really about giving the courts better tools to identify uh, those offenders who could be just as well served outside in the community as behind bars. Uh, because we know that uh, locking a lot of those folks up doesn't actually make a lot of sense. And uh, because of that work, our detention population is down by 18% over the last few years. And we probably have more to go. Uh, but I think it is a very, it's a start, it's certainly a step in the right direction. Uh, and one of the things along those lines, and I, I really credit Commissioner Coop with bringing this idea to us, it's a program that he identified was working up in New York, uh, which said, let's, let's do a better job of figuring out who ought to be incarcerated and let's do a better job of figuring out who can be better served in the community. And, and for those folks, let's make sure they're connected with the services that will make them more successful in the community. So we started doing that about a year and a half ago. I uh, actually signed that over the Rick Van Story uh, Center. And it was, frankly, you know, pretty amazing to meet uh, some of the, some of the, the folks who, uh, who, were, who were going through that program and realizing the difference in their life because they're participating in that program as opposed to being uh, in, in car incarcerated. Uh, we are doing a significant amount, as I said, you know, the focus has both been about being more thoughtful who, who was incarcerated in the first place, but also making sure that those who are incarcerated have a better chance when they get out of being successful, which is why that even during some pretty challenging budget times, and thanks in large part to the uh, strong advocacy of our commissioner, we have invested uh, significantly in job training uh, within our facilities. And uh, there is no question, and I, I know because I've spoken to so many of them, that so many of the people who are incarcerated, first of all, 97% of the folks who are incarcerated are coming out. And they like to be doing something productive when they come out. And for too many, they haven't really had a chance before they were incarcerated to develop the skills that are valued in the marketplace. And so the work that we're doing, whether it's around the new culinary program or auto mechanic or so many of the others that we're doing, uh, we think is is really we think is really important. Uh, Representative Bolden, good to see. You. Also, I want to acknowledge Penrose Hollins, uh, who is coming as well. Penrose, great to see you. Charles did mention the uh, the IADAP program, which is now uh, 3,500 uh, folks have participated in in that. Uh, the band, the box, which uh, he also mentioned, Representative Johnson's leadership, we think are important and, and are having. Uh, an impact. Uh, through the leadership of Senator Peterson uh, and others, the General <coughs> Assembly has passed legislation to reform our mandatory uh, sen sentencing law. Uh, the cost to taxpayers of keeping habitual offenders behind bars uh, for decades, including those who have not com actually uh, committed an act of uh, violence, is enormous. And we think that this reform will give judges discretion in sentencing so that we can focus our limited resources on keeping the most dangerous people behind uh, bars. And I'm looking forward to signing that measure into law. So that gives you a sense of some of the uh, criminal justice reform uh, things that we have been working on, and we think really importantly so. 
again, uh, with the theory being that no society that leaves so many able-bodied, able-minded people on the fringes when they want to contribute can be successful over the long term. And that has really been why we've done what we've done. So let me turn my attention to, to the bill I'm about to sign uh, today. And before I sign, I'm going to ask the legislators to say a few, a few words uh, as well. So in 2013, uh, Delaware eliminated the five-year waiting period before voting rights were restored to most individuals con convicted of a felony. That was the bill that was uh, named after Hazel Plant. And since then, a person with a felony conviction uh, could vote as soon as his or her probation is complete, but only if he or she has paid all fines. Now, people should meet their financial obligations. But once they've completed their sentence, their fundamental right to participate in our democracy should be restored. Now, I think in it, we live in a time where a lot of people really wonder whether their voice matters anymore, whether their vote makes a difference. And I think particularly in this period that we are living through right now, one of so much tension, and one where people wonder whether their voice does matter and whether their opinion is valued by society at large, I think the timing could not be more right for me to be signing this bill today because the right to vote is the absolute bedrock of our democracy. And the strength of our democracy, the strength of our country is entirely dependent upon whether or not people believe that their voice matters. So by affirming the right to vote, it's my expectation that this new law will not only pr promote a more inclusive society, but will also instill a sense of responsibility among those who benefit from it. The responsibility to contribute in meaningful ways to our communities. More than 40 other states have no financial bar to exercising the most American of rights, the right to vote. So I'm proud to be signing this today, but I sure wish we weren't number 40. But it's better to be number 40 than not to be on the list at all. I want to acknowledge uh, Mayor Williams, who's, who's come in as well. So I think it is very fitting that we are gathered here at the Achievement Center. It's a place that's committed to helping individuals with felony records return to the community. And Charles and his dedicated team, and I thought he was very appropriate in, in recognizing all the partners, because nobody, no group can do this on their own, uh, are a great example of our shared commitment to provide opportunities for all of our citizens to reach their full potential. So I am grateful to all. I had thought when I first came in, I thought I would ask everybody to introduce themselves, but I think we got a, a few too many people to do that. But I do think it's important for everybody to, to look around. Linwood, were you introduced before? The, Lin, uh, Linwood Jackson, new president of the uh, uh, NAACP, statewide president of NAACP. Um, <laughs> I, think it's, I do think it's important for everybody to look around to see who else is in the room. Because we really, uh, we have so much together at stake in how we come together as a community. And I think everything that we can do to empower those who have done their time, serve their time, to bring them back in and to recognize that they have an ongoing stake in what we as a community do together is really important. So, before I sign the bill, I would like to, the legislators who are here uh, to say a few words. Uh, you can do so from your chair if you like. And uh, we'll start with Representative Keeley. Okay. Nope. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Governor, thank you very much for being here. And if I can just uh, tell a really quick story. Um, <clears throat> it was probably, probably my second year in office. And, uh, well, second term in office. And I was sitting in, in, in my office and uh, um, Al Plant came in and goes, Keeley, I need to talk to you. I was like, okay. He goes, I need you to go on a bill. And I was like, okay, what bill? And it was the first step in this very long journey over 15 years that it's taken us to get to this point. And that bill started out with simply just reducing it to f having to wait after you commit or after you paid your fees, after you've done your probation, then you had to wait five years in order to then um, 
go back and re-register to vote. And we, that bill pa failed several different times, several different iterations in a row. Um, Al had passed away and, and Hazel took his place and um, she took up the, the, the championship to, to move voting rights forward regarding <coughs> the, the right for felons to do so. Um, we were successful in, in moving that down. Uh, she tried and it didn't, we weren't, excuse me, we were not successful. Unfortunately, Hazel passed away um, and I had seen her just about a week prior to. And she asked me if, um, if I would sponsor the bill when we went back in January. And she knew she wasn't coming back. Um, and, but she asked me to do so and I was so honored. And I know that Hazel and Al are in this room today watching the governor sign this bill because they would be so proud that we're doing this. And I know it doesn't necessarily say in the legislation that it's the Al O plant and Hazel D plant um, legislation, but it is. Let's like make no mistake about that. This is absolutely their bill. Um, our colleagues, this is not something that was easy. I mean, you think because of the, maybe because we're in an urban environment, this is something the easy to do. It's not easy. It was not easy to do. I mean, we got 21 votes in the House. 21. That's the majority that we needed. It could very easily have failed. Um, I'm not sure necessarily if, if everyone up and down the state understand the significance of this. I know for me how very important this is. I mean, I hear in my district all the time about, you know, Ms. Keeley, and, and I'm saying this, but this is not selfish. I wish I could vote for you, but I can't. What really bothered me the most about not allowing people who've served their time to not have the ability to vote was having a say in their future. Having a say on school boards. I mean, that is at the bottom of it is having the ability to say who's going to represent you on a school board who then in turn is going to talk about your children's needs when it comes to those school board meetings and referendums and everything else that go about it. You can't vote in a referendum. I mean, it's, it's, to me, it's like a little crazy, but we have, to, we have to get back. I'm glad we got the 21 votes. I know I'm rambling here a little bit, Margaret, but to me, that is the essence of it, is that it comes down to the small things in life that will allow an individual who has served their time to go out and do what's right and be, have the ability to vote to have a say in their future. 1999, I went to Poland. Um, on a uh, exchange program and they had had uh, the ability to vote in a in democratic society for about 10 years. Their total population of people that were voting was 95 percent, 95 percent after just 10 years. We've had the ability to vote for a very long time. I'm extremely enthusiastic by removing this last barrier that we will see the percentage of Delawareans voting in our upcoming elections rise from the typical 35, 28, 35 percent to hopefully above 50 percent. And everybody in this room, I'm going to give you one task to take home. Find five people, find five people who we know fall underneath this category and take a voter registration card to them over the next week and ask them to register to vote. Tell them they don't have to worry about the fees anymore. They don't, there's no more waiting period. And on election day, that we take them to the polls to make sure that they exercise their right to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, I wanna thank all of you for your attention to this important issue. I want to say to you that what you're looking at up here is what I call the A-team because we're the team of legislators who really get the hard stuff done. I want to talk for a moment about Representative J.J. Johnson. You know about Vanderbox, but you also know that he recently removed shackles from teens who are going to court. Yeah. This is the A-team. These are the people who represent you and who really are concerned about equality, period. Equal justice for all people. And my buddy Stephanie T. Bolden here, She's, her, she's made us her mission concerned about children aging out of foster care and their rights being protected and seniors' rights being protected. 
and Helene has been my buddy in all the crimes that we've done. <laughs> Relating to reduce, no, seriously though, we have done the heavy lifting. We've talked about that recently. When there's any major legislation that's hard to do, oh, give it to these two. They, they will work on it. But I want to thank all of my colleagues. Helene worked very, very hard on reducing the crimes for, for marijuana possession, which is a major reason why people are incarcerated, who don't need to be there, quite frankly. So it's just been an honor to serve with these wonderful, wonderful legislators. And I want to tell, tell you that we have an awesome governor. I've been in office over 20 years, and I've never seen as much movement as we've had under Jack's leadership. So I want to give him a round of applause. <laughs> so I just want to say as a member of your A-team, we're honored to be able to represent you, and we look forward to this bill being signed. I just want to say that two of my colleagues were giving a speech at Parkview. You know, it's election time, and people out giving speeches. And at Parkview, they were talking about this bill, and there were three people who stood up and said, I don't have the right to vote. I can't wait for this. I can vote. Can you imagine that? So as we talk about this in the community, it will impact so many people. So I want to thank all of you for being here because you will help to spread the word. Thank you so much. Thank you, Governor. Good evening. Well, good afternoon. Uh, you know, Helene talked about when her and our plan and uh, Representative Plan was involved with this legislation. I remember going back further than that. I happened to be a union rep at the Chrysler plant, the UAW, and we were going around registering a lot of members of vote. And we found out that a lot of them were ex-felons and weren't able to vote. And so the union the UAW lobbied hard. As a matter of fact, I was responsible for sending a lobbyist down Legislative Hall almost on a daily basis to get the legislation through. So I remember that. So we're very grateful. And, it, and I always say this, it's not just about the offender being able to be able to come back into society. It's about us. Because we're all better when we're all able. So that's what it's all about. You know, I've been fortunate enough to, to be able to sponsor some legislation that passed. And they mentioned man the box. But I would never have been able to be able to get that legislation passed if it was not for the administration. Because when I was first had the legislation draft, I was about to introduce it. And somebody came from the governor's office and they said, hold up on that, J.J., don't introduce that bill yet. I said, the governor's, I said, what, what you mean don't introduce it? I said, the governor is going to mention it in his state of the state address. I said, wow, that sounds good. And by him mentioning it in his state of the state address, I was able to get that legislation passed. So thank you, governor. You know, I mentioned some legislation that I was able to pass, and it, not just with the administration support, it's with the Corrections Department also. Commissioner Coop was the one that came to me, and I was able to introduce a bill and to allow ex-offenders to be able to work at the Department of the Corrections before they weren't allowed to. So it's, it takes a team effort. And not only the colleagues up here, but the colleagues at Legislative Hall. One of the uh, representatives, Paul Bombach, said to me last year, he said, AJ, uh, you, you introduce a lot of progressive legislation. And I, sometimes I think you're pushing the envelope. I had a legislation this year <laughs> to address sexual offenders residency. Currently, the sex offenders are in, in a lot of uh, communities or municipalities. They aren't allowed to live within the, the community because of such strict uh, restrictions. He says, uh, Representative Bombach says, sometimes uh, I think you're pushing the envelope, but I don't think you can get this one passed this year. And he was right. <laughs> I didn't get it passed, 
but I'll be back next year with it. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, it's all, it's all about us, all of us working together. And reducing recidivism not only affects the offender, it affects the community, the family, and we're all family. So, thank you. Now, to be clear, when I mentioned it in the state of the state, I mentioned that it was Representative Johnson's bill. <laughs> in case anybody thought I was trying to take the credit from, but we, we do appreciate that. Uh, so I thank those of you who spoke, as well as Representative Bolden, Representative Bombeck. Okay. I, thought you had I, I don't no. want to sit okay. here and say nothing. Um, I'm, I'm glad to be a co-sponsor on this bill, and I, uh, I allowed my uh, senior uh, colleagues to speak first, although I might be a little older, except older than JJ. But uh, <laughs> I, it just brings back to me that we have gone through these things so many times where people died and everything else. They had to count the marbles in their jar in order to get the rights to vote. And yet we still have to come back and re-legislate uh, laws in order to get these rights and privileges back again. So I don't want us to go forward without remembering from which we came in order to get where we are today. And uh, as uh, T.D. Jake said, we can do all the legislation in the world, but we can't legislate people's hearts. So we've got to change the hearts and minds of people as we go forward in this and not just get the rights back, but be able to, because I mean, it's a constitutional right in which to vote. So we wouldn't have to legislate laws, but do as Obama said, don't be mad about it, just get out and do what? Vote. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to thank legislators who spoke as well as Representative Bombeck, who said he's good, right? Uh, I also want to thank Kathy Jennings from the Department of Justice for being here. They've been uh, very strong partners with us in a number of these initiatives. So thank you for being here, Kathy. What's up? I, 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 I just finished. Mayor. First of all, I want to thank the A-team for their hard work in Dover. Uh, I know this has been a long time coming, especially you, Margaret, JJ, Stephanie, Colleen. I appreciate you, Natalie, and you guys not giving up and working so hard to get this passed because we did meet a lot of roadblocks even when I was there years ago. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here today. This is not about us. This is about the people who are struggling to get their lives back together. Delaware has had a history, a notorious history of punishing people even after they paid their debt to society. And that's the reason I think all of us are here today. But let us not forget, people need second chances. A lot of us in this room were leaning toward doing something bad or got in trouble and somebody gave us a chance. And each and every one of you, you know who you are, you don't have to put your hand up, but don't forget that. And second chances is the next move we need to work on. It's one of the things that we've done in this administration. We've given people second chances and things are starting to work out. And I say to you, just do not forget to give your brother or sister another shot because we are a brother's keeper. And for each and every one of us who are in the position to help someone, let's do that. Thank you. Okay, before I, before I sign the bill, Damien, would, uh, would you like to say a few words? Let me put it differently. Damien, I'd like you to say a few words. <laughs> How y'all doing? A um, little nervous. This is um, my first time ever speaking um, on a platform of this magnitude, but it's definitely an honor um, and a blessing to be uh, a part of history. Um, I was one of them guys that was, in, was, was incarcerated. Uh, I did 11 and a half years of my life in prison um, from the time that I was 19 to 31. I just came home officially um, April 10th of this year. Thank you. Thank you. So, I know that like, for me, this bill, I, I actually just heard about it yesterday. Yesterday. And um, it's, I, it means a lot to me because I always, like, I, I sat in prison and I watched elections, you know what I'm saying, Obama's uh, uh, election and all that, and it was times where I was like, man, I wish I could, I could vote for the man, or just vote for people that, that's in this very room 
that I done seen in the newspaper. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a good thing. And um I just encourage everybody that that's coming home to um take full advantage of it and go out there and vote and make a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and sign the bill. Uh, let me say to, uh, to Damien and to uh, other clients of the, uh, the Achievement Center, the, the bottom line of why we're here is because we believe in you and we believe in your future. And uh, we hope that this, uh, that this bill signing is a, is a signal to you of that belief that we have in you. And we hope you'll share that with, uh, uh, with, with, with others. So uh, thank you for sharing your message. Thank you. If there's anybody else who would like to come be in the picture, uh, folks associated with the Achievement Center in some fashion, or just uh, anybody else who would like to uh, come on up and be in the picture, come on up. All right, this is Senate Bill uh, 242. And it's the law of Delaware. I was honored to be here for the governor's signing of HB, uh, HB 242, where uh, ex-felons, uh, felons who have been released, and they've, paid, they've not paid their financial obligations, can now vote. I think that uh, that was an impediment on their right to vote that uh, should have been removed long ago. And uh, I'm hopeful that uh, all the ex-felons uh, who are out here and about trying to find jobs, trying to feed their families, will now take advantage of it so they can have a voice and what goes on in, in this city, this state, and in this country. Thank you.